welcome to Limitless Church. This is our online service. We are about to start with the sermon. And after the sermon, we'll go to a time of worship. And let me encourage you, please stay till the end because the worship time is always such a powerful time at all our church services. So um, let me encourage you, stay for worship, all right? But hey, uh, we would love to know who you are. Uh, let us know your name, where you're watching from, if you like this service, or if you want us to pray for you, just let us know. Send us an email or a message. But right now, I want to speak something very important from the Word of God. It's time for the Word. And it is week two of our sermon series. Good vibes only. Someone said vibes. No, good vibes only. Okay, you need to know the whole title. And just in case you're new or if, if you have missed last week, then let me tell you what the sermon series is about. All right? The sermon series is about peace. Okay, just in case your friends are asking you, hey, what, is your, what are those vibes your church is talking about? Like, is that even a proper church, bro, that you go to? Tell them, yes, it is a proper church and we are talking about peace. This is a sermon series about peace. We'll be talking about peace for the entire month of November. We've dedicated the month of November uh, towards peace. It's going to be a peaceful month. Or not. Uh, but at least we'll be talking about peace, right? We'll be talking about peace. But when, you, when we talk about peace, different things come to mind, right? Different ideas come to mind. If I ask you this question, what does peace look like to you? Then your answer most probably would be, peace looks like different things, right? Because peace looks like different things to different people. Peace looks like different things during different times, during different seasons. And last week I spoke about peace, which looks like an escape for some people, right? Uh, when you think about peace, some people think about peace as an escape from reality. That was last week though. This week I want to talk to you about something else that peace looks like. Because peace also looks like safety. Right? When you, when you imagine peace, when you think about the idea of peace, then you, you imagine yourself being in a safe place. Being safe. Because peace looks like safety. Right? Let me show you a couple of pictures. Uh, and let me ask you to do something uh, after I show you these pictures. This is the first picture. It's a picture of, a, of the lush greens. Right? And the other picture, this is a picture of a war zone. Now imagine being, imagine going to both these places. Imagine going to the lush greens. And imagine going to this war zone. And now let me ask you a question. Which place would you find more peace in? Which place would give you good vibes, peace vibes? Lush greens, right? Obviously, lush greens. What, what did you say? Someone said lush greens. Whoa, that, that, is, that is new. No, this is, you need repentance, whoever said that. But um, obviously, the lush greens, right? Uh, whoever said uh, the war zone, either you are a terrorist or you're going to become a terrorist. All right, people, beware of the guy who said war zone. He might have bombs in his pocket. But... Um, Obviously, you feel peace in the lush greens, right? You feel peace in the lush greens. And the reason why you feel peace here in the lush greens is because you feel safe in the lush greens, right? There, there's, no, there's no danger that you see in the lush greens. It, it looks like a safe place. That's why you go to holidays to places like these. Right? That's why you go to vacation. You take your family to places like these. You take your children, your babies to places like this. Because you feel, you, you trust this place with the safety of your children. You feel this place is a safe place. We took, we took our, our baby daughter, Sky, our one and only daughter, Sky, who was one year old at that time. We took her to a place much like this one. Right? Obviously, we had to think that a place like this would be safe. 
right? Otherwise, we wouldn't have taken a one and only daughter after eight years, eight and a half years of marriage. We, we had to know that this place was safe, right? But imagine us taking our daughter to a place like this. Imagine us taking our little baby to a war zone, going on a holiday to a war zone. You never do that, right? You never go to a holiday, to a war zone. Like you never see ads, uh, you never see Make My Trip or Trivago advertising holidays to a war zone, right? You never see Alia Bhatt and Ranveer Singh uh, in an ad saying, hey, let's go to India-Pakistan border, right? You, you, don't, you don't see a Marriott hotel at India-Pakistan border. Right, imagine you, you go to a Marriott hotel on the border in a war zone, you're getting into the pool, there are bombs flying around you, missiles flying. You never see that, right? Because there's no peace. There's no safety in a war zone. And because there's no safety, there's no peace. You don't feel peace because peace looks like safety. Peace looks like safety. Especially today. Especially in today's day and age. Especially during this pandemic, peace looks like safety, right? Especially when people all over the world don't feel safe, don't feel peaceful because they don't feel safe. People all over the world are saying the same thing. They're saying, I, I will only be at peace after I'm safe. I will only be at peace after this pandemic ends, right? Right? That's why governments, that's why countries are racing against each other. That's why uh, pharma companies are racing against each other to, to develop this, this vaccine, this uh, coronavirus vaccine. And governments are doing everything possible to, to, to release this vaccine as soon as they can. Because there's no peace. There's no peace in any country in the world. Because all people are, are, are saying, I'll feel peace when I'm safe. It seems like the world will be at peace only after, after the world is safe from coronavirus. It seems like there will be peace in the world only after the world becomes a safe place again. Because peace looks like safety. But what about Christianity? Any Christians in the house? Anyone who is a Christian? One, my wife, only my wife is a Christian. Unbelievers, man, this is going to be a day for salvation. I can give an altar call. All you people are going to roll like serpents. No. Um, what about Christianity? Even in Christianity, let me propose to you, even in Christianity, peace looks like safety. Because most of the scriptures that we know, that we love, our favorite scriptures, are scriptures about safety, right? The most famous psalm in the world, the number one ranked psalm in the world is Psalm 23. And the number ranked two psalm in the world in terms of popularity is Psalm 91. Right? Both these psalms are psalms about safety. When you read them, you get a sense of peace because they, they, they talk about safety. We love scriptures that keep us safe. Even in Christianity, um, peace looks like safety. So I thought, you know what? Uh, let me unpack the most famous psalm in the world today. Instead of going to a story, I'm going to go to a psalm. Let me speak on Psalm 23 today. And I want to show you something about peace that maybe you've not realized before. Right? So if you have your Bibles, you can open your Bibles to Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Some of you are not even opening your Bibles because you want to show off, right? Because you have Psalm 23 memorized. You know it by heart. You're like, I am not going to open my Bible for this Psalm. This is child play. I know it. Uh, even if the devil asks me at 3 a.m., I will, I will speak Psalm 23 to him. But uh, yeah, don't, it's fine. You don't have to open your Bibles for, uh, I'm going to open my Bible because my memory is that of a goldfish. And for all other goldfish in the house, we have the scriptures on, on, on the screen. All the goldfish watching, you have the, you have the scriptures on your, on your screen. But Psalm 23, Psalm 23, Psalm starts with a P, not with an S, just, just saying, right? And it's, not, and it's not pronounced Psalms, just in case you're wondering. Uh, funny thing. 
funny thing though, I just remember this. You know when tsunami was, was a new word for us, uh, right? So my, one of my friends came running to me and said, you know what is coming? I said, what? Uh, there's a tsunami coming. And we said tsunami for one month. Psalm, not Pasam, but Psalm 23. Maybe in Afghanistan or somewhere it's called Pasam. But Psalm 23. And if you're from, if you're an Afghan, no offense, bro. I, I just mess, mess up sometimes. All right, are we there? Psalm 23, are we ready to go? All right, you can repeat after me, okay? Because most of you know this psalm by heart. All right. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. Let me pause right here because this is such a peaceful psalm, right? Such a beautiful psalm, such beautiful words, such beautiful lines, right? Uh, don't you feel so much peace when you read this? Uh, I want you to do this, in fact. Let me do this one more thing, okay? Let me ask everyone in this room and everyone watching online to close your eyes. Don't worry, I'm not going to hypnotize you. I cannot hypnotize. I tried to hypnotize my, my one-year-old baby uh, but, uh, because she was not going to sleep. I tried to do that, but it didn't work. But um, close your eyes. It's going to be fun, okay? Close your eyes, and I want you to imagine the scene as I read this psalm again. Okay, I want you to imagine this scene seen. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Imagine that. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Stay in that place for a moment. What picture comes to mind? I'd open your eyes. Doesn't a picture much like this come to mind? Somewhat like this, right? You picture something like this when you read Psalm 23. And the feeling that you get, the vibe that you get when you read Psalm 23 is a, is a vibe of peace, is a feeling of peace. And I believe that's why we love this psalm so much. I believe that's the reason why millions and millions of people, Christians and around the world, say this psalm every day, every morning. And they, they even recite this psalm by heart from their memory. Because, because of the first three verses of this psalm. The first three verses give you a sense of, of safety and give you a sense of peace. Because peace looks like safety. Peace looks like safety. Peace looks like safety. And when there is no safety, there is no peace. Right? When there's no safety, there's no peace. That's why we try our best to make our world a safer place. That's why we try our best to make our own worlds, our, our homes, a safer place. We try to make our communities a safer place. We try to make our cities, uh, our, our countries a safer place. We, we put in so much effort, so much money, budgets, and so much uh, striving to make our world a safe place. Place. We want to make our world look like this, right? We, we try so hard, every country in the world, every leader in the world tries so hard to make our world look like this. Imagine, imagine every corner of the world looking like this. Imagine every place that looks like this. How peaceful would the world be, right? That's why we try to make our world look like like this. But that's a problem. You know what the problem is? I didn't ask you who the problem is, but because I know there are some names that are going to come out soon. This is the problem. That is the problem. The problem is that our world can never look like this picture. Our world can never be a peaceful place. Our world will never be a peaceful place. The reality, the sad reality of our world is that our world will never be a peaceful place, a safe place. And the reason why I say that 
is not because I'm a sadistic pastor, okay? The reason why I say that is because history tells me that our world has never really been safe before. Our world, from the moment our world was born, it has never been safe. Every civilization, every government, every leader has tried to make our world a safe place, has tried to make our world look like this, but they have failed miserably. In fact, every time they try, they fail harder. Our world has never been a safe place ever before. And when I hear people saying things like, you know what, it was so safe some years back, right? People in Goa, I always hear this, okay? Every place I go, uncles and aunties saying, you know, Goa was so safe, man, some years back. It was so safe. Our women were safe. Our children were safe. Our homes were safe. Let me tell you, that is absolutely false, all right? Because let me tell you a story, a, a true story. This really happened, okay? And this might be a little graphic for some people. This might be a little violent. Let me warn you ahead of time. Okay, this story is rated for violence, okay? You guys want to go ahead? You can otherwise put your mask on your ears. But this happened, truly happened. My grandmother, or right, my father's mother, my dearly beloved granny, uh, who was born in Mozambique, Africa, visited India on a holiday with her parents when she was a little baby, when she was two years old, much like my, my daughter Sky, about the same age. She, she came to Goa on a holiday when she was a little baby. This was way back in the 1930s. All right, 90 years back, my granny came to Goa on a holiday. She was, she was living in a tourist home in Altino Panjim. She was inside the house. The doors were shut, broad daylight when a guy somehow broke into the house and kidnapped her in broad daylight. He tied her hands, tied her feet, gagged her mouth and put her in a sack and put the sack on his back and he took her away. And apparently, now this is the, the violent part, okay? Apparently, he was taking her to sacrifice her because back in the day, it was believed that the blood of innocent children would make construction stronger. So they would kidnap children of about two years old, much like the children who are talking at the back. They would kidnap children of about two years old and sacrifice them and pour their blood and mix their blood in the foundation of bridges and buildings. This happened in Goa. This was Goa in the 1930s, ladies and gentlemen. Goa was never really safe. In fact, not just Goa, but our world was never really safe. It was never really safer than it is right now. And, and the reason why sometimes we feel it was safer before, one is because of nostalgia, right? We always feel like the days gone by were better than, than today. Right? I can challenge you this, okay? Uh, these times are the worst times for anyone, right? The pandemic is the worst, coronavirus is the worst times. I can challenge you this. A few years down the line, 10 years down the line, you will look back and say, those were such beautiful days. I love those days. I can challenge you that. Because we always love the good old days. The good old days are always good. Right? And, and another reason is because there was no news anchors back in the day. Right? There were no news channels repeating the same news over and over again, telling you the same things. When you see one murder, one kidnapping, one rape, you think everyone is getting raped. Right? Because you're hearing it all through the day. There was no news anchors back then. Like Im imagine Adnab Goswami reporting the kidnapping of my grandmother. Like the whole nation would know, even if the nation does not want to know. Right? But, uh, by the way, y'all are looking at me like, poor guy, his grandmother was sacrificed. No, she was not sacrificed. Obviously, because I'm alive. <laughs> right? She was not sacrificed at the age of two. But she was kidnapped and then she was rescued. Praise the Lord. She was rescued. Granny was safe after that. They called the cops. The cops rescued her because the Saka car taking his sack uh, moved. His sack moved. So the people, Goans are smart. Okay, People in Goa are smart. They, they, they realize there's a person inside. 
she was rescued, she was saved, she was home. Granny is looking um, from the top, she's looking down, smiling because I told her story. Finally, Granny, I made your story famous. This is only a story between our families. We never really said it out, but now you know. But what's my point? My point is the world was never really safe. Our world has never been safe, and I want to predict that our world will never really be safe ever. Our world will never really be safe. In fact, the Bible says that no matter how much you try, no matter who you vote for, no matter which government you elect, no matter what leader you support, no matter how much you protest, no matter how many forwards you send on Facebook and on WhatsApp, the world will never be a safe place. The Bible says that. In fact, this psalm, Psalm 23 says that. David says this when he talks about uh, Psalm 23 in verse 4, he says, Even though I walk, even though I walk through the darkest valley, our world really looks like a dark valley. If I, if I take you back to those pictures that I showed you earlier, then our world does not really look like this. Our world looks really like this. If you think about it, this is not what our world looks like. Our world looks like this. This is our reality. Our expectation is that the world, our world should look like that, but the reality of our world is that it looks like this. Our world is a dark valley and not a green pasture. Our world will never be a green pasture. So then, a question. If peace looks like safety, then how are you going to find peace in this unsafe world? If peace looks like green pastures, how are you going to find peace in this dark valley called planet Earth? You want to know how? Two people? I'll message you. All right, ask me how. You've got to ask me. Oh, okay, fine. I'll tell you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to know whether you're interested. Otherwise, we could, we could just go home. Some of you are like, yes, I just missed it. I could have just gone home. Let me tell you how. I want to give you two steps today to find peace. Right? This is a very application-based sermon series. Last week, I gave you two steps. Remember that? Pray and praise. Pray and praise. If peace looks like an escape, then pray and praise. Today, I want to give you two steps to finding peace in an unsafe place world, right? So for step number one, I'll take you to verse number one. Psalms 23 verse number one. And I want to show you the main key. I want to show you the main point in, in this Psalm 23, all right? And what most people miss. This is the most famous Psalm in the world, and most people don't see this part. You want to see something new in the most famous Psalm in the world? Let me show you. It is right in the first few words of Psalm 23. This is how it starts. It says, David says, The Lord is my shepherd. Say that with me. The Lord is my shepherd. My daughter is trying to say that. But all that she can say, The Lord is my shepherd. That's the key. That's the key. Have you ever seen this before? Have you ever read this before? Of course you have. You've seen this, right? You know this. But have you ever seen this as the answer to the question that your soul is asking you every day? Do you know the question your soul is asking you every day? Your soul is asking you, who is my shepherd? That's the question your soul is asking you every day of your life. Who is my shepherd? Whom should I follow? Because your soul is created to follow someone or to follow something. Your soul is not just created just to stay there, to pose. Your soul is created to follow. And the question your soul is asking you every day is who is my shepherd? Because there are many shepherds today. 
right? There are many shepherds in the day and age we live in. And I want to talk to you about some, some shepherds, okay? You might like this. You might know them. You might be following these shepherds. One shepherd, his name is Feelings. You know this shepherd? He's got a nickname. His nickname is Mood. And this shepherd called Mood, he comes to you and he talks to you every day and he says, come follow me. Come follow me. And a lot of people follow this shepherd. You follow your mood, right? If you're someone who follows your mood, then you're following this shepherd called mood. You're a follower of mood. Is mood your shepherd? Then there is another shepherd. His name is Vibe. Good vibes only, right? Vibe. That's the shepherd's name. And vibe is the mood around you. Not your mood, but the mood around you. The mood around your house, the mood around your office, the mood uh, among your friends, right? And this, this shepherd called vibe, he also comes to you every day and he says, come follow me, right? And so a lot of people, we follow the vibe. If the vibe is good, we're good. If the vibe is exciting, we are like, yeah, exciting. If the vibe is boring, we're bored, right? We say things like, it's so boring. Oh my God, I'm so bored. This, uh, I don't like documentaries because they're boring. I, like, I don't like the song because it's so boring. I don't like your face because it's boring. I don't like these clothes. It's boring. You are boring. Do you know the person who is always bored is the most boring person on earth? No one likes those people because you need something else to excite you. If you're someone who's always bored, then guess what? You're following this, this shepherd called Vibe. Is vibe your shepherd? Are you a vibe follower? Then there's another shepherd. His name, oh my God, this is such a famous shepherd. His name is Fear. He is, I think, the, the most probably the most famous shepherd in the world. He's got millions, if not billions, of followers around the world. Right? He is so famous. He's more famous than Donald Trump. He's more famous than President-elect Joe Biden. He is, if, if fear ran for elections, he would be president. And no, not even delay for counting, okay? Right up front. On the first day, all the votes for fear, right? Fear on Instagram has a blue tick. He's so famous. A lot of people follow fear. Is fear your shepherd? Are you a follower of fear? Do you take steps based on fear? Do you make decisions based on fear? Then there's another shepherd. Very famous also. His name is Desire. Right? This guy is very attractive shepherd. He's always, he's always posing. He's always wearing the, the... He doesn't walk like that. He walks. He's got a better walk than mine. Right? A lot of people follow him. And this shepherd called Desire says, come follow me and we'll get drunk on the weekend. Come follow me and let's get high. Right? Is Desire your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? That's the question your soul is asking you every day of your life. Who's your shepherd? Because listen up now. This is the key. Listen up. Whoever your shepherd is will determine the peace that you have. Because peace depends on your shepherd. Peace depends on whoever you follow or whatever you follow. Peace depends on your shepherd. Who is your shepherd? So step number one of having peace, of finding peace in an unsafe world is to choose your shepherd. Every day, every morning after you wake up, choose your shepherd. Choose who you will follow. Choose your shepherd every morning, every day of your life. Step number one, tell your neighbor, choose your shepherd. Just like David chose his shepherd, David chose the Lord as his shepherd. Who did you choose? as your shepherd this morning. Hey, hope you're enjoying the word. In the meanwhile, let me quickly explain to you how you can give to support our church and ministry. We've made it easy for you to give today. 
You can give via Google Pay or via bank transfer. The details of that are on your screen. We also want to say thank you for continuing to support us with your prayers and with your giving. But right now, let's get back to the word. Step number one, choose your shepherd. Step number two, after David said, uh, after he chose his shepherd, after David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he said two very contradicting things, right? I'm going to read them out to you. He said one, he said, um, he said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Everyone say green pastures. But then he also says, I walk through the darkest valley. Say dark valley. So which one is it? Green pastures or dark valley? Where was David in when he wrote this psalm? Was he in green pastures or was he in a dark valley? How many say dark valley? How many say green pastures? How many say both? You guys should move to the US and vote. The best people. <laughs> Counting won't happen till 2022. A lot of people, a lot of Christians, when we read this psalm, when we read 23, we feel that David is, was in a dark valley when he wrote this psalm and God brought him out from a dark valley into green pastures. Right? We feel, that's why we, we pray this psalm, we meditate on this psalm whenever we are going through difficult situations. Whenever we find ourselves in places which look like dark valleys. Because we hope that God will bring us out of the dark valley into greener pastures. Right? Because we think, we think this psalm is about turning dark valleys into green pastures. We think this psalm is about turning darkness into light. We think this psalm is about turning defeat into victory. We think this psalm is about turning failure into success. We think this psalm is turning dark valley into green pastures, right? Graves into gardens, right? We sang that song earlier. Graves into gardens, yeah, 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 yeah. Dark valleys into green pastures, yeah, 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 yeah. We think that is the... the, the the illustration here, we think this is the context. But there's a problem if you think this is the context of Psalm 23. There's a problem if you're reading Psalm 23 hoping to get out from a dark valley into, and get into a green pasture. There's a problem because the problem is in verse 5, in verse 5, David writes this. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. In the presence of my enemy. So he was still in a dark valley. God doesn't bring him out of the dark valley. David is actually talking about opening a Marriott hotel in a war zone. David is actually talking about go, getting into a pool, sipping on pina coladas while bombs and missiles fly over his head. He's actually talking about being in a dark valley and still having green pastures. David is not talking about green pastures, that picture on the left or the picture on the right of a war zone. David is actually talking about this picture. This is what David is talking about. This is what he wants you to have. Green pastures in the midst of dark valley. David is not talking about turning dark valleys into green pastures. David is talking about creating green pastures in the midst of dark valleys. David is talking about creating green pastures. Listen up now. Create a green pasture on the in side. This psalm, Psalm 23, is about creating green pastures on the inside while you experience dark valley on the outside. This psalm is about your soul lying in green pastures on the inside while yourself walks through dark valleys on the outside. 
Even though, even though I walk through the darkest valley on the outside, I still have a green pasture on the inside. Even though I walk through a bad situation on the outside, even though I walk through a bad season on the outside, even though I walk through disappointments on the outside, even though I walk through failure on the outside, even though I walk through loss on the outside, even though I walk through betrayal on the outside, I still have green pastures on the inside. Even though I walk through a pandemic on the outside, I still have a green pasture on the inside. I I still have peace on the inside because here's the key here's the key check this out peace peace is not an experience on the outside peace is a person living on the inside peace is not an experience peace is a person peace has a name and his name is Jesus Christ and he lives on the inside of you he lives on the inside. Peace is a person who lives on the inside. So if step number one of finding peace is to choose your shepherd, step number two is to follow your shepherd. Because many people choose their shepherds in the morning, right? In your morning prayers, you commit, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And in the evening, when someone cuts you on the road, you pull your mask down and you give him a piece of your mind, right? That is not peace. You need to choose your shepherd and then you need to follow him throughout the day. So step number two in finding peace in this unsafe world, check this out now, is to live your life from the inside out and not from the outside in. Live your life from the inside out. Out. Let the presence of God on the inside determine the peace on the outside. Let the faith that you have on the inside determine your feelings on the outside. Let the vibes that you have on the inside determine the vibes on the outside. You want good vibes only? You want good vibes only? You need to have God vibes only on the inside. God vibes on the inside produce good vibes on the outside. I just made this up, by the way, just now. It is not in my sermon notes, but, but it's so true, right? Live your life from the inside out and not from the outside in. Two steps in finding peace in this unsafe world. One, choose your shepherd every day, every morning of your life. Choose your shepherd. Be intentional about choosing who you're going to follow. And two, follow your shepherd. Live your life from the inside out. Live your life from the inside out. Because don't wait for, don't wait for safety to find peace. Because you will never find peace otherwise. Because this world is never going to be a safe place. Peace is found in the midst of trials and sorrows. But let me give a disclaimer, okay? I, I, I realize I have to give disclaimers uh, because uh, y'all put me into a lot of trouble a lot of times, all right? Because I say something and people say something else about the sermon. Disclaimer, I'm not against safety, okay? I, I love safety. I believe in safety completely, obviously, because I have a, a two-year-old baby, right? I believe in safety. I'm a father of my only child of two years old. I understand safety. I will, I will die to keep my baby safe. I will also kill. Okay, I will kill you to keep my baby safe. In fact, I have two babies. Right? And no, Helen is not pregnant. And uh, I was not referring to Helen as my second baby. Okay, I have three babies. I have Sky. I have, because Helen is watching. So like, what? I have Sky, Helen, and my third baby is Limitless Church. And I'm absolutely committed to your safety. I really am. I pray for your safety every day. Because this is what Jesus says to every pastor. He says, take care. Like he said to Peter, take care of my sheep. You are his sheep, not mine. That's why I don't call you sheep. But I am, I am entrusted with your care. So I pray for you every day. I'm accountable to God for your safety. But even more than your safety, I'm accountable to God for your salvation. Because peace doesn't come from knowing that you're safe. Peace comes from knowing that you're saved. 
Peace doesn't come from safety. Peace comes from salvation. And only Jesus can give you that peace because only Jesus overcame this world. The peace that he gives you is not a peace, is not like the peace of this world. The peace that he gives you is the peace of his world. That's the peace that I want you to have. Eternal peace, unwavering peace, limitless peace. That's the peace I want you to have. So remember those two steps every day so that you can have peace that is unshakable. Amen? All right, in closing, let me call the band up on stage. We're going we're gonna to shift our focus to the Prince of Peace during worship. Let's get to, into a moment of worship. Silence me. 
Your name cannot be overcome. Live without your name is a lie forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Come on, let's let's sing it like we mean it. Your name is a lie that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. salvation Lord with you you are the true prince of peace and we choose to follow you only we choose you Jesus as our shepherd today and forever more in Jesus name everyone said Amen. God bless you guys have a great week and I'm going to see you and you next week same time same place